Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. I'm Heath, and in this episode we are reviewing Star Trek, the original motion picture six movie collection. Now that six is very important because it was just about a year ago, I think it was September 2021, that Paramount issued the first four Star Trek movies on 4K. I think that was a canary in the coal mine release to gauge audience interest in Star Trek movies on 4K, the original movies. Uh, and from what I understand, the response was pretty big because here we are one year later, we've got the complete original crew movie adventures, adding the final frontier, adding the undiscovered country, but also adding the, the director's cut of uh, Star Trek, the motion picture. I was concerned that uh, when this was announced, I, I didn't see a whole lot of talk about the special features. And so I was really concerned about what special features were going to be included, what were going to be left off. I was really worried because Warner Brothers is doing this, multiple studios are doing this. When it comes to the 4K release, they just drop special features. Paramount has not done that. This is a beautiful box set. This is what we've been waiting for. And I have no doubt that if this sells well, then in about a year, maybe September 2023, we'll be talking about the next generation movie adventures. Uh, and then maybe a year after that, they'll just put everything together in one huge box set. Um, but this is, it's actually great. This is a 15 disc set. I've loaded every single disc in my player, gone through the special features. Not only do I see nothing missing, everything's been carried over, not just from uh, previous the previous box sets, also the director's cut of uh, Wrath of Khan. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that has been carried over, but there's new, there's even more new supplemental features like the motion picture uh, theatrical cut has so much new stuff here. And uh, let's just, let's get into it. So here's the front of the box. It's, it's really well done. This is very shelf friendly too. Here's the back of the box. And here is, uh, we have a case for the 4Ks and a separate case for the Blu-rays. And you're going to want those Blu-rays if you're a 4K fan, because that's where all the special features are. Now, the... Put that right there. The um, the 4Ks do have the commentaries. Here's how they've broken it down. So, motion picture director's cut. Uh, the director's edition has the feature film and the special features. Anytime it says special features here, it's talking about the commentaries, the audio commentaries, and then the text commentaries from the Okudas. Uh, those are here as well. Uh, so there's the so that was the director's edition. Another disc for the uh, the the theatrical version, uh, Wrath of Khan. Both cuts are on this one disc with the commentaries. Search for Spock, uh, Voyage Home, and then uh, the Final Frontier. And again, both cuts of the Undiscovered Country are on one disc. You just choose which one you want. But the real the the real special features here are on the Blu-rays. So check this out. So here's the the director's cut, the first disc of the Blu-rays. It's pretty much identical. But there's a whole second disc for the director's edition of the motion picture that is just bonus features. It's nothing but bonus features. It is incredibly well done. Then a third disc for the motion picture, which is the uh, the feature film and the special features, again, uh, for the theatrical cut. Now, they've issued, for the people that already bought the four movie set, they're, they're issuing these on their own. So you can buy five, you can buy six, and you can get the, the motion picture box set, which has a lot of pack-in paper goodies, and it's a premium package. Uh, my understanding is that all the discs are here, um, that the, I'm just missing out on the paper stuff, the, the presentation of that, which is beautiful. Um, but I really just needed the movie. Uh, and it does have the deleted scenes from the, I think it's the 1983 television cut of the motion picture. Great stuff. Uh, director's uh, cut and the uh, same thing, uh, two cuts on um, uh, the, the Wrath of Khan, Star Trek Three. We don't need to get into all this stuff. But um, what I was so impressed with is just how much I mean, everything that I could think of that was the tributes to the passed away actors, the uh, the the documentaries. There was uh, Star Trek was always a leader in documentary footage, uh, and and so much of that stuff has been brought. Well, all of it, as far as I can tell, has been brought over. Um, how do these movies look on 4K? So they look really good. Um, here's the star by that though. So for me. I noticed, so I did side-by-side -side comparison. I'm telling you guys, I loaded every single one of these discs. Um, the the Blu-ray versions are, of course, brighter. Blu-rays are always going to be brighter than 4Ks. 4Ks are by nature dark. They're darker because they've been recolor graded. They're tapping into the HDR technology. They're tapping into the 
the increased color spectrum that uh, that the 4K display gives. So Blu-rays, there's a, and people know too, Blu-rays are brighter than a theatrical presentation. Blu-rays have been boosted to make them. That was part of the marketing for Blu-rays. It's like, look how good, look how good they look. But the more filmic, more natural uh, presentation comes on the 4K. But here's what I was going to say. So the Blu-rays, for my eye, seem grainier. More grain. I like grain. I'm a grain apologist, right? Because I love movie shot on film. 35 millimeter film, grain is what makes the image. So if, if you see something without a lot of grain, it's been probably been messed with. This is my thing. The, the Blu-rays have more grain than the 4Ks. And I'm like, did they do a DNR pass? A, a, you know, like a noise reduction pass on the grain? I don't know. Uh, you, some might say that the grain on the 4K is more resolved um, for me, it looks a little smooth. This is very common, especially with major studio releases. You don't see it on smaller label 4K releases, especially not on like genre movie. I like Blue Underground 4K releases. They're Grain City, but different film stock, different time, you know, different era. Uh, this, but, but it, I, just, I just wonder, it doesn't look as grainy as I was expecting it to look, even compared to the Blu-rays. Um, but there is no doubt that it is a step up. It's actually a couple of steps beyond the Blu-rays as far as the uh, the contrast and the depth, uh, the natural skin tones. There's a real fleshy, you know, and this is getting into the real, you know, the esoteric aspect of this, but there's a real, uh, it's just very lifelike. These are great presentations of these movies. But if you're expecting, you know, this huge, like, is you know, the being blown back in your chair upgrade, I don't know. I don't know that you're going to see this. I, like Star Trek VI, side by side, I see a difference, but I don't see a huge difference. So um, certainly a step forward. If you don't own these movies at all, this is the set that you want. Because not only do you have the 4Ks for whenever you get ready for 4K, and it is coming, you will, your next TV, if you don't have a 4K TV now, your next TV is probably going to be a 4K TV. Uh, but if, if you don't have a 4K now, you're covered with the Blu-rays, right? So the Blu-rays all the special features. So you have the best of both worlds here. And uh, at the price that it's going for, like right now, today, I'm recording this on release date. It's like $107. That sounds like a lot. But I'm telling you guys, I was there in 2009 when these came out. And uh, that's not that bad for six movies with all these special features in the probably final home video incarnation. I don't think 8K is coming for the Star Trek movies. I think this is probably the last physical media stop for... They'll be repackaged, you know, ad infinitum. They'll be sold to us over and over again. But as far as the transfers and the discs, I think this is probably the end of the line for Star Trek. Uh, I hope... I, you know, I gladly paid my own money for this. I, 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 I love Star Trek. I've written about them. I, I'll, I'll try to include some of my Star Trek writings in the description of this, of this episode so if people want to see... I, the motion picture is my favorite. It's the one that cl most closely resembles uh, Gene Roddenberry's original vision. It's the one that's also most the super 70s thing. Later, it would get more militarized. I love what Nicholas Meyer did with it by making it kind of nautical, bringing in Horatio Hornblower. I love all that stuff. But I do love Roddenberry's. That first movie is real special. It's real different, too. And it's the one that feels the most, I don't know, it's, it's, it's psychedelic. It's, it, it feels like the original series. Um, an extension of the original series. That's my favorite. But uh, I, I really, I, I wanted to, to support these. I hope it's successful. And I hope that we get those next generation movies shortly down the line, maybe in a year. Did you pick this up? What do you think about it? If you didn't pick it up, I'm going to put links in the description of this video so you can uh, click through there. You'll be supporting Serial at Midnight while you're getting awesome things. Sending a message directly to Paramount that yes, there is an audience for Star Trek on 4k we are here we will buy this uh did you buy the first ones and where are you at with that i'll just continue the conversation in the comments below but star trek uh it is a wonderful time to be not only a film fan but to be a star trek fan there's so much trek hitting our screens uh everywhere you know and on the in the the uh the the, the streaming universe there's just trek everywhere so let's celebrate guys thanks so much take care until next time live long and prosper